So in this video I'm going to show you how one simple tool in Lightroom can massively improve your photos and also improve your compositional skills. Morning everybody, it's fantastic to see you all again. So I'm just packing for New York and then San Francisco. I'm really excited, I'm going to the US on vacation, but I'm also gonna do some street photography when I'm in New York and then when I'm in San Francisco, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back to some of the old locations and, and doing a little bit of landscape and maybe seascape photography. But the point of this video is to tell you all about the crop tool. And I know that sounds like, what, the crop tool? That's like really easy to use. Well, I don't wanna show you how to use the crop tool, but I wanna show you how I think it can massively not just improve your old photos that you might have in your Lightroom catalog, and you'll probably discover some photos that you actually didn't even know you had. But more importantly, it can improve your compositional skills so that when you go back out and shoot, it'll make you a better photographer. So the reason I, I, I wanted to do this video is that I was out on a workshop last week and I took a photo and I wasn't really happy with it and I did a crop and it made a significant difference to it. And I do that quite a bit and, it, and, and then it makes me think a little bit about how I then go back out and evaluate the scene. So let me show you this photo. So this was one of the photos that I took and uh, I really like the light on this photo. And what, what I was trying to do is I was trying to get this tree and, and we were talking about light and shade in the workshop and I was trying to explain the difference between when the tree's lit and when it's not lit and how it can massively change the composition. So that's these two photos here. So the first one, obviously the tree's not lit and the background is lit and the second one, the, the, the tree is lit and the background is partly lit so that I think the, the sun wasn't quite falling on the lake and we were waiting for the background to be less lit. So we were concentrating on that and probably not concentrating enough on composition. Um, so when I got back and um, looked at these photos in Lightroom, I realized I had this shot here. So it was quite a good shot. The tree was lit perfectly. There was shadow in the background, but there was just a little bit of light on the trees. And this is exactly what we were going for, but we just hadn't paid enough attention to the composition. But if you just crop in on this shot, so you can see here, if I just crop in, you get this shot. And this is a really powerful image. And it just shows just how much difference it would have made if I had just zoomed in a little bit, going from probably what was, I don't know, 50 millimeters to 70 millimeters would have transformed the image. So more often than not, that shot is right in front of you, but you can't always find it when you're on location. And what you're trying to do is hone your skills so you're better tuned to find that shot. And it tends to be where you're using sort of longer lenses, maybe sort of 35 plus really, up to, up to 200 millimeters, and you're trying to pick out elements in the landscape and by going back through your catalogue and looking at some of your photos then you can massively improve that. I'm going to show you how now. So first of all, this is a shot I took a long time ago called Sun Tree and when I was taking the shot I actually didn't zoom in quite close enough but you can see that when I crop it, it makes such a, a more powerful image. And actually, you know, when I waited for the sun to be in the right location, then I got the perfect shot. But this is a cropped in shot. I wish now that I could go back and take that, at the, the full resolution of what was then a 12 megapixel camera because, you know, cropped in, it, it reduces it to probably about eight megapixels. This is another one. This was a winter tree that I took at the Roaches in the Peak District, which is fairly near to my house. I took the wider scene here, and actually the shot was tighter. I should have cropped in a little bit more, but I could do that afterwards. And I've learned now, and I've gone back and taken that, sh that tree in many different guises and, and got some fantastic shots. You know, this one you've probably seen before in one of my compositional videos. It's these people on the beach. I took the shot, but it's actually the crop, which is the really powerful shot. And what you tend to be doing when you crop it is you're simplifying the image. You're making it much, much simpler, which tends to make a more powerful shot. You know, it's one thing I talk about all the time, having a simple, simple image, you know, a really simple composition is, is often much, much more powerful. But you're often sort of taken away by the bigger scene and that's not good. And, and, and what we're trying to do is not just improve our images in, in Lightroom by doing this technique, but trying to find out how we can improve when we go out on location. Because if you can improve your compositional skills when you go out on location, then that's you know massive because then you might move to the left or the right, not just crop, crop in on it afterwards. 
so this is a good example of where we were in this amazing location again on a workshop in Skye. It was a beautiful, beautiful morning. And I got a little bit carried away with the sort of wide scene. I wanted to get this sun, sort of just the glare of the sun coming over the scene, but it didn't really work. We had a little bit of lake here, which, which didn't show very well. But you can see that if I cropped in on it, and I did do that afterwards, then I got a much more powerful portrait image. And actually, you could also make this a powerful landscape image by cropping in even further. And again, simplifying that scene, making it much simpler and putting more emphasis on the layers throughout the scene makes a much, much more powerful shot. Anyway, I wanna leave you with this top tip, which is, if, if you are struggling, then you can always do a really big pano. So, you know, maybe put your camera on sort of 50 millimeters and just go a around the scene that you've got a big wide vista and just take a huge pano. So take this shot, for instance. This was, I think it was something like 20 images stitched together and it produces, oh, I don't know, about 250 megapixel image. But what that means is that afterwards I can go into the image and crop in the areas that I think are best. And because the scene was changing so much, you know, I, I ended up getting a shot with just one shot, but I wanted to be able to take the interesting parts of that scene so that I could crop in later. And, you know, the, the crop that worked quite well was this one, which was fantastic. But then there was another crop that was tighter in, which I, I could pull out of this image as well, this one here. And, and that just made such a big difference, having that information, you know, getting that information and then cropping it and, and dealing with it later is, is often a really good thing until you start to improve your skills and you can spot those things in the field. Again, I did exactly the same with this one. I took a, a pano and then afterwards I cropped in to something that I felt was a little bit more balanced and this ended up being a shot that I put on my site as one of my portfolio images. So it's a really simple technique, quite a quick video this week, but I think it will be something that you'll find really, really powerful. Go away, look at all your photos, just go back through your photos and I think you'll be surprised. You'll find some gems in there that you can crop into, but it also will give you practice so then you can go back to those scenes or just learn something a little bit more and start to see the, the images a little bit differently. And the one thing to remember is just try and simplify it. Try and find those simple elements within your images that you've got in your Lightroom catalogue. Okay. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below, you know, maybe say what you think works best for you in, in finding those compositions. It really helps when you comment and give it a thumbs up. Then if you're not subscribed, then I'd love it if you did subscribe. Thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday, bye.